we are almost through with this. Um, I'm only going to explain lambda expressions, comprehensions, and strings for a short video each. And um, decorators is going to be additional material, which you don't have to see. OK, next topic, lambda expressions. Lambda expressions are simply an alternative way to define function functions. And you normally do this for small throwaway anonymous functions. Okay, it's nice to have a small one liner because normally if we wanted, for example, to square a number, we would write it like this. We have function def square number and then the arguments and then some return statement. And then we can call it and we can check what the type of this variable square number is. The type is function and if I give it the argument 8, it returns 64. So like I said, in Python functions are first class objects and as they are, they have a type just as any, any other object. And simply the alternative way to write this is we could also write square number equals lambda x, x squared. This does precisely the same, the same thing as this. Lambda expressions are detected by the keyword lambda. And then we have a list of variables. In this case, it's only one. I could also x, y, z. And this is then the list of arguments like we would normally have in the parentheses and then colon, and then the whatever is going to be returned. So there's an implicit return statement here. So we cannot, in our lambda expression, we cannot have um, a normal function body besides whatever is returned. So if we can return something in a one-liner, then we can make a lambda function out of this. Actually, in Python 3.8, this becomes nicer thanks to the Wildbus operator, but we don't care for that for now. Um, this is actually a relict of Python being also um, influenced by functional programming languages. And in functional programming languages, generally that functions don't have behavior, but simply do something quick and then return that and yet that you can chain functions. And just as well, I could in a Lambda expression, we chain functions. But we can keep it also easy. So and this here then, if we execute only this part, this is a function object. Okay, so this is a lambda function object. So this is a main dot lambda function. And we can simply assign this because functions are first order objects. We can simply assign this to a variable. And if we do so, the type of that variable will just as well be function. And we can simply call it with arguments and it will work just the same as if we um, wrote it like this. This here is an example of how to have, for example, two arguments. Okay, and normally what we do, why do we have lambda expressions in the language um, where we do it for small pieces of code? I do it a lot because I love one-liners, but I think it's generally not good style. So for example, these are some examples of my code where I just have a now function which does something, a make time function which takes an integer apparently or a string which is a time and prints it nicely or I don't know where want to have some kind of arguments for a normal function. Partial would also be a good there here. I would wait there here, but never mind. So small pieces of code, one-liners. But this is not the best style. And generally what we do is we use lambda expressions to show that we only need a function in this one place. Okay. And to explain what I mean by this is, uh, let me first get to list operations, okay? So we have list operations. Imagine we have some collection, like a list here, and there are, for example, two ways to sort. So we can use the sorted function, which creates a new sorted list, where this one stayed the same, and we can assign that to a new thing, or we can use the dot sort method, which sorts in place. Okay, so these are two ways to sort a list. The sort method has arguments. So for example, the reverse argument, which sorts in descending order. Okay, but now if we want to sort, for example, um, a list of dictionaries. So if we have a list of dictionaries, how would Python know how to sort this? Because dictionaries have no in inherent order because what, what, is, what key are we sorting from? So if I write only sorted people, Python just wouldn't say, well, I'm trying to apply um, a smaller operator, but it doesn't work between dicts. And this is why we have to provide a key. And the key simply looks at every item in there and asks these items, well, what, what is it that I'm sorting according to? Okay, so if we want, for example, to sort people by their age, we would have to tell the sort method, 
um, for every dict for every dictionary you encounter in this list, take the key h. And this we can do by a function because the key expects a function. So the key asks, yes, I'm sorting. And now that I'm looking at this list element or at every list element, at what of these list elements am I supposed to look? And this is something where a lambda expression is really useful because this is a function we need precisely once inside this sort method. And this is a throwaway function. We don't need it afterwards. And to show and well, to make our code more obvious and shorter, we use a lambda expression in this position. So we sort according to the key, which is this following function that for every item you're looking at, we turn the h. And this then returns this number. And numbers are sortable. So that's nice. So we can now sort our list of dictionaries like this. If we want to change it to the name, we could just as well change for every element you're encountering, take the name. And just as um, uh, just as the sort requires a key, for example, other functions and methods also expect, or you can use a key argument. For example, you can make the, uh, the max function, you can use the key here. Oh wait, now I have an exercise for you. Use the min function with a key argument to find the person that comes first in the alphabet. You know what, this actually doesn't make max into argmax. You may do this at home. But um, let's get to the exercise here. This is the solution, so we have min just like max and instead of getting the h, we which we get the name. So this here returns the person that comes first in the alphabet. Okay, and then one last thing where also lambda functions are useful, and that is map filter and reduce. And map filter and reduce are three functions that exist in Python, and that show for, that are one more example that shows that Python takes inspiration not only from the object-oriented paradigm programming paradigm, but also of that of functional programming. And in functional programming, I already told you, you normally have functions. So you have a function that you can chain to other functions. You don't have this concept of an object, but you simply have just one chunk of data. And this is executed in a function. So and a function is um, executed on this, which operates, which does some step of operation and then returns it. And on top of that, there's another function, which does some one step of operation and returns it and so on and so on and so on. Okay, and in functional programming, the concept of map filter and reduce are useful and what these are not just normal uh, programming flow. In object orientation, they are not that much. These functions are there to apply a function to a collection of data or rather to every element of that data. And the easiest of these three is the map. So map takes a function and a collection and simply applies the function to ele every element of this collection. And this is again a case where lambda expressions are obviously useful. So imagine we have a list and then we have a function which squares every element of the list. And to get the result, we can simply use map, and then the function and then the collection. And this then returns a map object. Why that you ask? Because Python 3, as I told you, is lazily evaluated. So a map object is only executed if it needs to because it's a generator and uh, we can simply convert it to a list. But if we convert it to a list, oh, I somehow took, I somehow overwrote lists. If you overwrite lists and you get an error like this, you can import built-ins, write list equals built-ins dot list. Now list is what it's supposed to be again. Sorry for this. Um, and now we see it squared all the numbers. So that's, this map here is the same as looping is making a new list and looping over every element in this list and well appending the square in this case because this is the result of our lambda function all right map is the easiest of these three to understand filter is also not too hard filter takes a collection the function that must return a boolean value and as the name suggests it filters the list and creates a new list of elements for which the function returns true and that's really nice thing to have and so, for example, imagine we have this number list and we want to filter this list according to, so we only want to keep these elements that are smaller than zero of this list. And ta-da, we're done. So another example where the, I just uh, 
took from a project of mine where I walked somehow through a directory of files and then I wanted to filter those whose file name extensions I had in some certain list. Um, and if I didn't provide the argument to include hidden files, I always wanted to filter according to those that don't start with a dot. So this is how you would filter. Filter is a really nice thing and actually filter I use quite a bit. And then there's reduce. And reduce is a useful thing to perform some computational list and return the result. And then it returns basically, it does a rolling computation on sequential pairs of values in a list. So I have my first, my second, and my third element in the list. And reduce first calls a function on the first and the second element. And then it gets the result. And this result, and then it applies the same function on the result of this and the third element. And then it gets a result and it would apply a list of this, uh, the result of this with the fourth element and so on and so on. Okay, we can use reduce, for example, to take the product to get the product of all elements in the list. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, and we want to have the product of all. So it first takes a product of one and two, and then that's two. It takes the product of the result, which is two and three, which is six, and then the result of this, it takes the product with that and four. And then we have 24. Okay, so this is the same as having basically this um, one variable that keeps getting updated. So product equals product times num, and then we num is the next element of the list. There are nice links where you can let that be explained to you better. It's just, I want to, uh, you to know this. And there is also a real life example here, for example, where I uh, wanted to get the newest commit of an unsorted list. I could have just as well sorted the list and then took the first one. Uh, this is just, uh, I wanted to use the reduce function here. However, note that you have to import reduce because not in the standard list. Okay, as much for functional programming Python. So note that the next topic is going to be comprehensions and a lot of this, all of the stuff we're doing with map filter and reduce, we can also do with the list comprehensions also just one line. And this kind of contradicts the Zen of Python and the Zen of Python we can print if we import this. Well, actually, I just did that, so I have to let me restart the kernel. It only prints it once. And then we see the Zen of Python. And the Zen of Python are just some statements that people want Python to be. Beautiful is better than ugly code. Explicit, doing something explicitly is better than doing it explicitly. And it also says there should be one and preferably only one obvious way to do it. And actually, this kind of contradicts the Zen of Python because what I showed you now and what list comprehension can do fulfill the same purpose. But these comprehensions are better and more Pythonic because they are not functional programming stuff.